Today on the Beam Channel, I want to talk about one of the sort of basic Erlang examples, Parallel Map. Now, Parallel Map is one of those, you know, I think exercises every Erlang or Elixir developer should write. I'm going to present it here in Erlang, but the Elixir code would be exactly the same, basically. And the idea is, you know, the map is you take a list of items and you apply some function to each of them, and then you get a new list. Now, normally map would operate sequentially, and in fact, in many cases, that's what you want to do. While Erlang and Elixir provide a low overhead for creating new processes, it's not zero. So you should be aware of that. And, you know, you might also want to do something clever like limit the number of processes so maybe it'll only create 50 total, a maximum of 50 instead of just an arbitrary number. That's beyond the scope of this video. I've also, you could also use more specific Elixir features like tasks and so, agents and stuff that, hey, I'm not presenting those, this is the very simple one. What we want to do is create a PMAP function and it should write the regular, fun regular map, take a function and a list of items to map over. Now, what you'd want to do is first of all do a spawn, and then you're going to create a little wrapper function in that which can be execute, which is going to take the process ID of the, the master process, the iterator function, and then the element of the list, and it's going to create an element, create a process for each of those. And then you'll get back a receive that says, or that or then the execute function will run that function over the element and send back a message to the initial process with the process ID and the result. Now that process ID is very important because we're going to take advantage of Erlang's pattern matching here in a second. You'll notice that we stored a list of process IDs up at the top there. That's important because if we didn't do that and we just said, okay, just get all, wait till they all come back, First of all, you'd have no way of knowing how many you'd expect. But second of all, they'd all come back in a rent in an arbitrary order. Given n elements in the list, there would be two to the n possible orderings. And you know, it would come back in presumably a different ordering every time, or at least potentially so. So what we're going to do is use the gather function here to receive them in order. So you can see that we say we take the first item off of that list of PIDs, and we wait for, in the receive, for an element to match that. And then we take the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And that way, no matter what order the process is finish in, they're gonna always come out in the right way, because we're gonna pattern match through the, through the list until we get the right order. So you don't have to think about it. It happens, it sort of magically falls out. Now the problem with this initial implementation I showed you is that, if something goes wrong in one of those, things, for example, if you took the square root of a negative number, it would die. That process would die, but then the master process would just hang there waiting forever. So we want to account for that. And fortunately, we have a good way to do that, which we can do with a monitor. We can say receive. So in our list map, we can say, instead of spawn, spawn monitor. Now we're going to get back a PID and a reference. But we can just leave that, the rest of that code the same. And we're also going to, in the gather function, we're going to add a timeout. And we're going to say 500, be half a second here. You can change that value whenever you want, it doesn't matter. And then in the gather function, we're going to change the receive, so instead of having PID, we're going to have PID and MREF, the reference to the monitor. And in the case it works correctly, we're going to leave that exactly the same, that doesn't change. But in the case that something goes wrong, we're going to get a different message. We're going to get down, mref, process, pid, reason. And reason will be the reason the thing failed. In that case, we're going to call exit, error, reason. You could also just have it return the error if you want, but I, I find this better. And we're going to also add a timeout there, which is going to timeout the exit of pmap reason. Change that if you want as well. So that is. That monitor, which you have top, now so, so if we run it, and so we take this example here where we're going to run it over a list of numbers. We're going to use the square root function over a list of numbers. If we run it over, if we include a negative number in that list, we are going to get an, we're going to get an, an error because the square root of a negative number, well, it gives us an, it theoretically is an imaginary number, but early. So if this was any sort of 
error condition. Simple one. You get back. Oh, error. You could alter that error. You know, what was the initial value that caused the error too? That might include. I didn't do that here. Possibly as well, so that you know. Oh, it was the negative number that caused the problem. Or it was. So anyway, I hope that was useful to you uh, as an exercise to exercise. Go rewrite this mixer or you know, enhance it in some other way. Feel free to steal this code if you want.